Hello and welcome to Thrift Miss, where I'm going to 24 different thrift stores, no repeats, and I'm trying to pull the maximum amount of value out of each thrift store. For this video, I'm going to the regular Goodwill retail store in Hampton, Virginia. It is in the same building as the Goodwill outlet, but they are on separate sides of the building. So they're the two different thrift stores for the purposes of Thrift Miss. Uh, also, the sourcing is completely different. So let's see what kind of stuff I find in the regular retail side. Hello, editing Bob here and my producer Moxie. I am trying to edit this video and I do not understand what has happened, but the footage from the store, the shopping footage, looks great uh, on Google Drive and it looks great on my phone, but somehow the transfer, either downloading it from Google Drive and both trying to directly upload it from my phone, something is going on that is weird my producer is telling me to get back to work. And it, it's either choppy, uh, has this weird motion blur going on, or it, it it's just weird. So I do know it's there. I'm hoping it's just this set of uh, files for this one particular store and that the rest of the Thrift Miss videos will be fine. But I'm just letting you know, uh, the shopping portion is gonna be a little weird, but the haul portion is fine. So I guess just, deal with it or not you know you can just skip ahead if you want to okay <laughs> deal with it all right as soon as I walked in I went to the shoes and I actually found a pair of Clarks these are a pair of ten and a half men's boots and this is me giving everyone motion sickness including myself as I'm editing this I'm so sorry I do not know why it's like that here's a bunch of false graft you know, you find that in every thrift store. And I saw this needlework piece. Again, I'm so sorry for the motion sickness. Um, it was professionally framed, but I decided not to pick it up because it did have a couple of stains that you can't see because of the motion blurring. This is, this is amazing. I then saw this. This is from the 70s and it is gorgeous. And it's only $18 for quite a few large plates and also all this is me counting to make sure there are 17 pieces so I get them all and this is the sugar creamer and then all of the little cups that go with it too so I did actually manage to find all pieces together here is me showing you my cart so far uh, they went a little hard in the hard goods and I always check the books the two books that are there are not in the hall um, because I'm keeping them so Sorry, I forgot to include them. Please forgive me. Here's me waving at you that I'm I'm still here. Goodwill wants four dollars for this plarn mat, which people normally create out of plastic bags for homeless people to lay on. That's a choice. And here is my shopping cart, and then uh, it all organized it and folded up and ready to check out. Okay, so I am back after shopping at the retail location in Hampton which is right next to the bins. And to answer the question that I'm sure I put in the title, uh, the bins is better. But if you wanna see what I got at the retail section, <laughs> let me just go ahead and show you. I'm pretty sure everybody that has shopped at the bins and shopped at the Goodwill Retail will pretty much always choose the bins over the retail location, uh, one for price and two, cause it's just more fun. You feel like you're treasure hunting a little bit more. So I'm gonna show you everything I picked up. I'm gonna start with the one pair of shoes and I promise there are two of them. I just brought one over because they're kind of big. So these are just a pair of Clarks. Uh, I'm guessing you guys can tell that these look much different than they did in the footage. Uh, that is because I have cleaned them and uh, with the Argolis cleaner that I have linked down below. And I also conditioned them as well. And that pretty much just got rid of every single scuff in this shoe. What I found interesting about these Clarks uh, in a previous video where I was listing a box of Ephembra for Money Pile Monday, I, uh, I saw an ad in one of the listings well, for the vintage magazines for Clarks and it's from the 60s. So this exact style of shoe Clarks have been making since the 60s. So same style from 50 years ago maybe not as great a quality now who knows i don't know maybe better probably not but these actually are in great shape they have very minimal wear on the bottom 
which is why I did pick them up. I knew that I could make the leather look much better and in my personal opinion, I think that they do. I also went ahead and picked up some hard goods as well and that is only because I recently cleared out and sold all of the Fiesta wear I had so I had a little bit of space. So I actually picked up all of this set because Goodwill doesn't let you buy pieces of the set. They only let you buy all of it. I'm just going to show you a small plate from the set because it was a lot of stuff. So it's this beautiful green, which is what drew me to it. And it's like this nice floral pattern, which is very on trend. Uh, there's a resurgent of not only mid-century, which has been popular now for about a decade, but also like the 70s, like conversation pits are in vogue, even though those don't exist anymore, really, unless you have like a home that hasn't been updated. But I saw this, it's green, it's beautiful. I thought it was gorgeous. It is Electra Casual Ceram, and that is the pattern down there. So it is Cresta. But it's made in Japan, so I picked up all of this, and it came with some mugs that I'm going to have to try really hard with some Barkeeper's Friend, which is also linked to my Amazon store, or you can get it at any grocery store to see if I can't get some of the standing out of the cups. Uh, and it also had the original sugar and creamer. So what I do when I get a large lot of dishware like that is I sell each piece individually, except, you know, the sugar and creamer are going to be in the set. And I just take one big photo. I'm, it's over here, so I don't know why I'm telling you this. It's just one big photo of everything, and then I break down everything individually in one listing. So someone can just do replacements of things that they're missing, or if they, like, broke a plate, and they just need one, they could do that. And then everything is priced with flat rate shipping. And then you buy more, you save more. Because that's less that I have to deal with. This little tiny cup I am keeping. It's like a little, it's almost like a shot glass, but it's not. This is just like a two ounce. This would be like if you're having a little uh, aperitif. But this one I'm keeping because I only found one of these. And at the Goodwill retail locations, uh, if it is a clear glass uh, they just mark it as like you buy more you save more or it gets less expensive so I actually bought all three so the two that I'm selling are larger versions of this and the listings gonna be over here and it's sold as a set you could sell these single glasses but not really I just hold on to these vintage Libby this Libby by the way <laughs> I love how I'm just talking to you about it and not actually telling you there's an L there so these are uh, Libby mid-century glasses. So I found three of them. So two of them are getting sold and this I'm going to hold on to until I hopefully find uh, a match. And I was surprised when I found these and they aren't the same as the other ones. They aren't the same as the other dishes, but I found eight of these. This still has some sticker residue that I need to get off. But this is another mid-century piece. Again, it's green, so that's why I saw it. And this is Axon's uh, this is also made in Japan, and this is Sarsoda is the pattern name, which is down there. Part of the reason why I like selling hard goods is because a lot of them have the names on the bottom. So it makes it really easy <laughs> to figure out what it is. Or they have date codes on, on the bottom so you can figure it out. That's all the hard goods and the shoes. And then now we have a nice pile of clothes, starting with the thing that I am wearing. This is a vintage piece from the 80s. It's got a banded bottom here. Elastic, still a decent shape. It has uh, banded sleeves as well. And it's a Henley. And it's got a little pocket. Now, this is a women's medium piece, which is why it fits me great. It's a little bit high on the neck, so this isn't something that I would keep. Uh, I did have to replace all of the buttons because the buttons were missing uh, here in here. So I just changed all the buttons to just regular white ones. So it's pretty much brand new now. Well, it's not brand new. It's a pre-owned piece of clothing. <laughs> but that that's a real, again, real easy repair. Uh, it's something that I like to do while I'm listening to an audio book. It's just kind of a mindless, nice thing. And again, you guys know I love saving these vintage pieces from the landfill because people, a lot of people don't know how to sew, even something like a button. And that's okay. This can move on to a new home now. I also found a new tags piece. 
This is Eddie Bauer. This is Legend Wash. This is actually still on the website. They, Eddie Bauer, sell these for $40 a piece. There is the tag. Um, so I thought that was great. I, now, I wouldn't necessarily pick this up at the retail location if it wasn't brand new with tags. I probably would have left it behind. But because it's brand new with tags, that is why I picked this up. I also found another Lucky Brand Venice Burnout shirt. This gray Henley, and this one is a medium. The other one I found, I believe at Diversity, was a 2XL. So I found two, which I think is really cool. This is actually something I need to ship out because uh, this has sold. So this is Johnny Cupcakes. The reason why I picked this up is because this has always sold very quickly for me as for the fact that I have to ship this out now. And also these uh, t-shirts, because I had a sleeveless top, they combined them together. So it was $3. So I am 3Xing my money on this. And again, it was an immediate flip. So I'm pretty happy with that. So that I need to put over here because I need to ship that out. <laughs> Another beautiful vintage piece. I will try this on. Actually, you know what? Here, let me do that now. Do a little TikTok edit there, whatever. <laughs> this is the sweater, unfortunately. Well, I mean, I guess maybe it's a, supposed to be a three quarter sleeve, but this is an 80s sweater. It has really interesting different knit patterns here. It has the banded bottom. I'm guessing this is supposed to be a three quarter sleeve. Probably, yeah. So it's cute. It's a, it's a size large, large. So it still fits me. Uh, again, it's a little bit too high on the neck for me, just like the other piece was, but it's really cute and it's a great color. And again, I love saving vintage pieces from the trash. And I do actually like this. This is kind of cute. If it wasn't so high on the neck to where I would break out in hives, uh, I would totally keep this. But because this is a little bit high on the neck and it's going to be a little bit too uncomfortable for me to finish wearing this for the rest of the video, despite the fact that it's very cute, I'm going to go ahead and change again. <laughs> okay. So there we go. So this is just a We The Free top that I got a long time ago that I have kept because as you can see, it's baggy and flowy and sits lower on my neck. So all the way around, happy and cute. And let me get into the rest of this haul now that I have just messed around for way too long. Foot Joy is a great golf brand. Uh, it has a decent sell through rate. It's not at 100%, but it is consistently a good seller for me. And this is an XL. This is pink striped and it has no other branding on it other than the Foot Joy branding. So I went ahead and picked this up because I have good luck with this as well. I rarely pick up kids clothes, but this was actually sitting on the rack as I was waiting to check out and it's Marmot. And this is a kid's fleece. So it's a size large kid's fleece. And considering that I could double my money on it and I am supposed to go through all of the, the clothing racks, I figured I'd try it and see how it does. Marma doesn't sell as well as it did like, you know, two years ago, but I'm hoping that because it's in season, it will go. I found two Woolrich flannels. So, and they're both in large. So this nice gray one and this nice blue and red one. I checked sell-through for these and the sell-through is really good. It is the season for flannel and Woolrich is a good flannel brand. Uh, so I picked both of those up as well. And I also found another Woolrich piece, but this is a vintage piece. This is John Rich and Bros with Woolrich. And it's a really cool Hawaiian Aloha print giving me big 90s vibes here. And I picked this up because Vintage Woolrich has always consistently done well for me. And while this might have to wait until spring time, I have no doubt that this will sell. In addition to the Woolrich flannel, flannel, I found one of my favorite brands to find. One of these days I will find some for myself. Uh, this is Duluth Trading and this is a 2XL and it's a big flannel. Uh, they are big on gussets, so it has armpits that are gusseted. Uh, I did have to do a repair on this as well. Again, like with the shirt that you saw when I started filming, uh, I just had to sew on some buttons and it had extra buttons on the bottom. So I just replaced the one button that was missing uh, with the one button that was in the tag down here and we're good to go. So 
great thing. This is a roll tab, so it actually has uh, the button on the outside of the sleeve so you can roll it up, which I actually forgot to, to note in the listing. I should probably do that uh, after I'm done filming this. I also found a Columbia PFG. Columbia has not been moving for me recently. I don't know if it's because of the season and I just need to wait for it to be springtime. I think that's what it is. I think it's just been unpleasantly cold and so no one's going out fishing. But I'm hoping that springtime, all of this stuff I've been hoarding in my store will sell. It's just a basic blue Columbia PFG and this is an XL. And this was in amazing shape. It didn't have any pulls, didn't have any stains, which is something you have to look out for with fishing gear. I found another Harley piece. I, this is the thing that allowed the Johnny Cupcakes piece to, why am I pointing? You can't see what I'm pointing at. The Johnny Cupcakes piece, It so that way I could get both for $3. This is a Harley Davidson. This is from San Diego, which I thought was kind of funny because you know I recently, I went there uh, a couple months ago and so I picked this up in hopes that it will sell. I've picked up a lot of Harley uh, for Thriftmas and just hoping it will move when the weather maybe warms up and people can ride around on their motorcycles again. I found another new with tag piece. Again, another brand that I wouldn't necessarily pick up at a retail location, but because it was new with tags, I did. Uh, this is a pair of swim trunks or swim shorts. And these are the six inch casuals or whatever the listing will be over here. But they're new with tags. They are 2XL in this khaki color, just a nice basic. And something that's also still selling on the shot, um, site. So just like with the Eddie Bauer, that was new with tags. Those are also selling for $40 on the LL Bean site. So that was awesome. And then the only bag I found, which was a surprise to me and something also I don't normally sell, baby stuff. And this is also new with tags. This is a Carter's Carry It All diaper bag. And it's, it's the floral pattern. And why it says Carry It All is because there is a little changing pad that comes with it. So you can change your baby on the go. And it's got other stuff I'm guessing that babies need. I don't have kids, so I don't know. Or maybe it's just got stuffing in there. I have no idea. But yeah, I got this as well. So that's everything I picked up. Uh, you know, I have already sold at least one piece from this haul, so it's still good. It's just not quite Ben's good, especially not with the buy cost, because it cost me this much money in order to purchase everything you saw here, which is way more than it cost me <laughs> at the Ben's, which is right next door. Uh, and then this is what I'm hoping to make. So Ben's is still better for me, uh, but it was nice to actually go through the entire section uh, in Hampton. You know what? I'm still happy. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Till then, bye.